Hello and welcome to my uh, tongue-in-cheek MSC1 unboxing video. Um, thought I'd take a, a leaf out of the uh, the Instagram book and um, unpack our product MSC1. Um, talk about what's in it, what the value of it is, um, etc. Et so what is MSC1? It's a collective licensing scheme um, that gives you access to all of MSC's core products. It's based on a token licensing model. It's scalable, so it has uh, a solution from, from entry level one user all the way through to uh, multinational global OEMs. It's got a very broad solution set in it, um, and it's cost effective, particularly for the smaller user that's been locked out of the MSC tool set on a cost basis for many, many years. So start with uh, talking about how these tokens work. So a popular misconception is that they work like uh, poker chips at Vegas. So as you use them, they disappear uh, and you run out, which is not the case. So um, I'm going to base this example on, on 30 tokens. Um, it's three of the products there's Patran, Nastran and Apex uh, have different token counts, 13, 13 and 9. So imagine a scenario where your user comes in in the morning and opens Patran to do some FEA modeling. So he's got 13 tokens out and then he wants to run the, the, the analysis in Nastran. So he, he clicks the button to run Nastran and it takes a further 13 tokens, leaving just four available. He then thinks, well, while that's happening, I'd quite like to use Apex to clean up some geometry and make a midplane. Um, but when that happens, um, it gets rejected on the basis that there's too few tokens available. So the user simply closes Patran and then there are enough tokens available for Apex. So it's, it's really just a way of modulating demand for the products um, so that you can, if you, you can scale up by buying more tokens if you need to. So the scalable offering, there's two tiers of MSC1. There's what we call the start edition, which is pitched at either the one or the two user um, level. Uh, and then there's the full solution, which is for three or more users. There's some limitations placed on the start edition um, to reflect the, the lower cost of it. Um, so you're, you're limited to either one or two workstations at a single geographical location. Uh, there's a cap on the number of maximum number of tokens. There's 30 on the one user and 60 on the two user. And there's fewer products included. So some of the more esoteric ones that are in the full product set are left out. Um, and you're only allowed one instance per customer. So, so one legal entity is only allowed one installation of Start Edition. Uh, the full product, as I said, has, has more applications, it's some manufacturing, some databases, that kind of stuff. Um, but it's scaled up. Uh, you can take more tokens as you get more users. Um, and if you, you can expand from a, a network license at a single facility up to a country license for all of the facilities within one country, and then on to a regional basis and a global basis so that your licensing can effectively follow the sun to get more utilization out of it. So broad solution set. So what's in this MSC1? Um, it gives you access to, to a wide range of products here. So there's acoustics, there's rigid body dynamics, there's material modeling, explicit crash simulation, systems modeling, FEA, CFD, data management, all those kind of things. Um, this is really focused on those people looking at the start edition. So if we look at the, the start edition um, in terms of what's in there, we've got the acoustics, Adams Multibody Dynamics, Mark FEA, Apex FEA Modeler, Nastran FEA, Patran Pre and Post Processor, uh, Cradle CFD, and the important Learning Center. So let's go into those one at a time. So what is Actran? Well, it's an acoustic simulation, um, and it gets used anywhere where uh, noise level or quality is a consideration in your design. So be it uh, vehicles in terms of uh, interior acoustics or pass by noise, machinery in terms of radiated noise and noise in the workplace requirements, uh, audio equipment. Um, so in terms of uh, quality of uh, um, speakers and uh, how the acoustics in a room function um, and through to things like rocket payloads, the, the, the core uh, key load condition for anything that goes into space on a rocket is an acoustic, uh, a random acoustic pressure analysis. 
uh, and Actran has a particular tool in for doing that. So how could you use it to improve your business? Well, you could make your vehicle better. You can make it more desirable by um, reducing and improving the noise quality. Uh, you could um, improve your machinery. We had an example of a, a customer using Actran to reduce the radiated noise from a building site generator that allowed their generators to be used on sites within cities earlier in the morning. So they were more desirable um, because building sites could operate over a longer window. Um, we've seen examples where people have used it to, to locate and design the audio system in a luxury yacht, but it would equally be done in a house. Um, and then again, as I mentioned, there's the random acoustic field capability for, for anybody launching anything of any size into space. Um, it's it's a, a much better way than traditional way of, of applying random acoustic PSDs. So some examples, uh, it's quite biased automotive because that's the heritage of the product. So we're looking here at um, radiated noise from a powertrain. Um, we've got noise within the, the silencer box on an exhaust. So we're superimposing a, a volumetric flow rate on the uh, vibroacoustic propagation. We've got an example of the trimmed interior of Volkswagen Passat. And then to prove it's not all automotive, this is a, a top view on a lawnmower. So looking at the noise generation from the, the uh, spinning of the, the lawnmower blades there. The next product up is Adams. So what is Adams? Uh, technically, it's a multi-body dynamic simulation software and it's used for anything that moves. So again, automotive heritage. So vehicles, anything that, that moves or flies or runs on rails. Um, Machinery, so large machinery like uh, excavators, diggers, cranes, etc. And then down to mechanisms like fine detail mechanisms like um, it's been used for mechanical fuses. It's been used for um, uh, platter style hard disk drives, uh, tiny fine detail mechanisms where you're looking at uh, reaction times and speed of movement and, and optimizing that. So how could it improve my business? Um, you could for example, do ride and drive simulation in, in the Adams car module to make your vehicle a more pleasant drive or a better handling vehicle to adapt your steering geometry, your suspension geometry to give better performance. Um, you can use it on your mechanism to, to verify that there are no clashes or no binding conditions as your mechanism uh, goes through its paces. Um, and you can use it for generating synthetic loads. So this is, again, uh, from the automotive industry, but just as valid to anybody else. Most of them now have uh, digital test tracks where they can run a digital car over a digital test track, which will dramatically reduce testing costs. So you can you can generate loads and evaluate the effects of changes to suspension on the, the loads in your, in your vehicle. Um, and then if you are currently de designing mechanisms and you're relying on the kinematic solution in your CAD system, one of the things that that is almost certainly not able to do is consider the influence of flexibility um, and non-zero degree of freedom problems in there. So if you've got uh, free moving components or you have components that have a degree of flexibility that could affect the behavior and the performance of your mechanism, then Adams can do that uh, quite happily using an FEA reduction from Nastran to represent the flexible body. So we'll look at some examples here. We've got a helicopter rotor. We've got a pipeline inspection robot from the oil industry, um, an engine and a gearbox. We've got uh, an automotive test bed. We've got an assembly robot. We've got a digger. We've got aircraft controls. And then here's some examples with flexible bodies. So these are all reduced from Nastran. So they're based on FVA and they've got uh, dynamic and static um, Stiffness is included. Um, we can do things like drop testing of aircraft landing gear. This is a washing machine with an unbalanced load in it. This is a digger looking at how the loads build up. This is a mechanism from inside a rifle. And, and lastly, here's an example of a wind turbine with flexible blades looking at the loads that occur on the gearbox, which is the particularly uh, sensitive part of one of these things where most of the failures occur. OK, the next product in our unboxing of MSC1 is Mark. So Mark is a general purpose nonlinear FVA solver. And by that, I mean it's it's used for solving 
uh, problems where there is, is non-linear behavior. So where materials exceed their yield strength or where they're, ne they're not linear from the beginning like elastomers. Um, you can simulate failures, post-failure behavior, collapse, buckling, crush, that kind of thing in, a, in an implicit environment. Um, how could it improve your business? Well, it can help you model the true behavior of rubbers. Mark has a really strong heritage in, in the rubber and elastomer market. Um, you can simulate the state of your structure as it fails. So you can look at uh, elements turning off their stiffness as they exceed their, their ultimate strength criteria. And then you can also look at things like the cumulative effect of assembly on a service load. So things like uh, gasket spreading, so where you're gradually tightening the, the bolts on a, on a head and spreading a gasket before you apply the, the duty loads. Um, and then it's worth noting that uh, Mark can often solve the problems that your current nonlinear FEA code can't do or struggles to do. So we've had uh, numerous instances where people have um, struggled to get consistent solution behavior from um, a more widely used um, nonlinear FEA code, um, particularly problems where there's very large strain or lots of contact bodies going on. Um, Mark has some excellent capabilities in that area and is really able to take those problems on that other FEA codes can't. So some examples of that. Here we have a, a stent. This is a nitinol shape memory alloy. Um, and it's a thermal structural coupled analysis showing the, the stent expanding within an artery and how it behaves, how the contact behaves as the, the artery is then um, bent afterwards. Uh, we have an example of a, uh, a door seal. So that's you've got large sliding rubbers, uh, self-contact potentially going on in here. And this example is looking at uh, adaptive meshing and element failure as we tear, literally tear the two pieces of material apart. All of those are bread and butter type things for Mark. So Apex, it's MSE's next generation FEA environment. Um, it's being increasingly developed, but at the moment what it's most widely used for is the rapid creation of FEA models from CAD geometry. So how could it improve your business? Well, it could dramatically reduce the time it takes to prepare the models. Um, we've had instances of people reducing days to hours, weeks to days. Um, and it has a very powerful API based on Python, which lets you automate repetitive tasks. So you can you can speed up yet further by by having automatic processes that you define yourself. So just a little um, run through example of of some of the capability of Apex. So it's got some clever defeaturing. So it's uh, automatically detecting types of features and letting you uh, delete them, suppress them. You can then go through and automatically mid-plane, um, extract the, the mid-surface from this, and that will work for um, non-uniform thickness as well. And we just can, we can kind of tidy things up um, just to make sure everything is, uh, is stuck together, um, throw a mesh on it quickly. And then there's a nice feature to automatically detect thicknesses. So you can um, take your mesh and it will automatically detect the thicknesses based on the part it came from. And that works for non-uniform thicknesses for tapered structures and even fully non-uniform thickness like lenses. Um, it will happily apportion thickness as a, as a continuously varying field.
So Nastran, what is Nastran? It's the granddaddy of all FEA solvers. Um, it was originally developed and commercialized in the early 60s uh, around the NASA Apollo missions. Um, and it's primarily used, uh, I'd say the majority of users are doing uh, statics and dynamics of, of large structures um, and structures with very rigorous, rigorous safety requirements like airframes and uh, rockets and things like that. So how could Nastran improve your business? Well, it can solve your larger FEA problems faster. If you're currently struggling to run large frequency response models, um, Nastran um, has a lot of features to speed that process up. So we have seen a customer who was taking two days, so 48 hours plus to run a frequency response, a random response, in fact, um, we were able to get it down to a couple of hours by moving over to Nastran and implementing the parallel processing and some of the other um, automatic super element techniques to, to speed up that process. If you're a consultant, um, it opens the door to working in some particular industries. So there are industries that have Nastran as a requirement. So a lot of aerospace companies for aerostructures, but also the space industry. Um, if you want to put something into an ESA rocket, uh, it has to be analysed in Nastran. So, so having Nastran um, opens that door for you. And historically, it's been very expensive for a small consultant. Um, but as you'll see later on, that's, that's no longer necessarily a barrier to, to working in that environment. It's got some powerful optimization tools for, for lightweighting, for improving um, design concepts. Um, and you're getting access to a very, very experienced support team. Um, your, your support goes through DTE in the first instance, where we've got about 30 years of experience with Nastran. Um, and we back off to a UK team with you know, decades and decades of experience. And then as you go to, to Europe and worldwide, the, the experience is unrivaled. Um, so some examples of Nastran, again, automotive and aerospace heritage. So we've got auto structures, we've got a, a aero structure here. But it's used, as I said, in space industry. So this is an example of a satellite. Uh, we've got some marine customers, so people modeling ships and boats, um, industrial machinery, so um, fans and um, impellers and that kind of thing. And then uh, optimization, as I mentioned, is a strong feature in Nastran. So it's not just limited to topology. We can do shape, we can do topography, we can do uh, topometry analysis as well, optimization. So Patran, what, we, what is Patran? There's not a lot to say about it. It's the, the historic pre and post processor for Nastran. Um, it's used for model preparation and for post processing. And how could it improve your business? Well, the, for me, the key thing about Patran is the, the depth to which you can post process your results. Um, I've seen too many times people doing a cursory post processing in a in a tool that just lets you look at von Mises stress uh, and not fully exploring um, drilling down into those results and, and leading to, to problems later on, failures in the field. Um, it also gives you access um, to more functionality in Nastran and is supported in many other FEA modelers um, to save you having to get in and, and hand edit decks to, to take advantage of some of the functionality. So next up, we have Cradle CFD. So this is one of the more recent additions to the MSC family. It's a Japanese company developed it originally. And it's a family of fluid dynamics tools. So it's used for modeling the flow around, through and within systems, um, both for just flow purposes, but also for, for thermal reasons to look at things like uh, convective cooling, uh, force convection, that kind of thing. And how could it improve your business? Well, it could be used to improve the aerodynamics of your vehicle. So you make electric delivery vans and you want to streamline them so that your battery life increases. That's that's a classic usage of CFD. Um, improving your thermal environment. So it could be a vehicle. You could be looking to um, reduce the battery drain from the HVAC. You could be looking to reduce your, your heating cooling costs in a building or um, maintaining a, a stable thermal environment for your electronics so things don't overheat and malfunction. Um, it's used widely in civils, architecture, construction environment for looking at the built environment, both, uh, as I said, for internal thermal, but also for things like pedestrian comfort. So the airflow around a building, 
um, and even um, uh, with its heritage as a Japanese product, it's been used for uh, tsunami prediction, um, as you'll see in a second. And then one thing that's worth talking about, it's not necessarily just for looking at the behaviour of the fluid, it can be used for generating, um, again, synthetic loads in the same way as atoms for applying to component design to reduce your testing costs. So we've got a little uh, sort of fly through of some typical examples. So we have external aerodynamics. Um, one of the things you can do is get acoustic power. So you can start looking at the, um, the noise generated. Here's a, a, a moving obstacle thing. So it's a, a little shuttle valve type thing where we have a moving obstacle and a moving mesh to support that. That technology extends to things like this centrifugal pump where we have the, the impeller moving around, moving mesh superimposed on the static mesh. To, to generate your flow there. Um, and then again, an extension of that further, you can look at things like mixing of two liquids here. Um, marine environment, it supports both fully submerged flow for propellers, but it will also do things like partially submerged for hull design. So this example is a wave um, electricity generator. So as the wave rises and falls, it pushes fluid up and drives the impeller here, generating electricity. So it's a way of looking at what the loads are on that, but what also the power is. So here's the example I talked about earlier, looking at the progression of a tsunami wave through a city. So quite a large scale type simulation here. Um, but we can also look at things as a, a requirement by um, the City of London, if you develop buildings um, to, to look at pedestrian comfort. But you can also go all the way down from the, the airflow around the building to the flow inside the taps in the bathroom on the third floor if you want to. So it's, it's not just for large designs, it's for small as well. So here's some thermal examples. So this is a, a portable device where packaging is getting ever denser and thermal becomes more of a consideration. Um, again, more electronics, uh, looking at the you know, thermal radiation from this camera and how it's dissipated through radiation and convection. And then lastly, another example on this is a, a daughter card for a, for a computer. So looking at how the heat is lost from this by convection. Um, this is not a product as such, more of a service, but as you can imagine, um, adopting all of these tools uh, would leave you with, with quite a costly bill if you were to try and get classroom training for every course, every module of every course on every product. Um, what MSC provides to, to offset that is access to the learning center. So you can use your tokens, you can use four tokens, um, and they're basically checked out while you access any of the course material for any of the products. Um, and when you've finished and you log out of the portal, you return the tokens and they could be used for you know, part of a Patron license or for a parallel processing license for, for Mark, for example. It's a huge benefit. It means people aren't going on training courses and they're not using the material for months and forgetting it. They can, they can train as they need to and they can refresh their training as they need to. So cost effective was one of my claims. So I'm taking here an example of a, an SME or an independent consultant where you're just looking at one user and where 30 tokens covers the range of scenarios. Um, so I'm gonna compare what it would cost to have a, a, an in, individual lease of each of these core products. I've, I've left off Actran, the acoustics thing, because it's uh, 42 tokens for the Vibro acoustics. So not really accessible within the single user model. Um, but the, the total cost annual lease for all of those products, um, about 62 grand. Whereas if you had 30 MSC1 single user tokens, 8,100 a year. So you can see, um, somebody setting up on their own um, to offer consultancy, that's a huge saving um, compared to trying to do it with all those tools. It means you're not just gonna have to pick one tool um, to base your business on. You've got the, the flexibility to offer Nastran FEA analysis. You could be doing uh, mechanism design with Adams. You could be doing CFD. Um, so it, it increases the number of contracts you can bid on. Um, and as a, as a design company, it gives you a wide range of tools that you can build a, um, a product development 
process around. So just to, to wrap that up, say the, the start edition is, is ideal for smaller companies. Um, for example, those who would need Nastran to comply with the supply chain or for code requirements. Um, historically, it's been too expensive for, for small companies to get into that market, um, not with this pricing model. Um, if you've uh, fed up with, can't get any more benefit from the, the cut down and simplified uh, simulation tools in your CAD system, gives you the opportunity to, to um, increase your capability, gives you, um, you know, as I said, access to a full virtual product development solution. And then for larger companies, um, you've probably got software. I've done software inventories for large companies where they've got products that, that may not even be used once or twice a year. They might be, might be used once every three year design cycle. Um, and they maintain that and they pay money for it and rarely use it. Um, and load balancing. If you've got uh, GUIs and solvers from different vendors, um, you're, you can't do any load balancing. Whereas if on a token based model, the tokens that are being used by users for GUIs during the day could be used to run solvers at night so that you can get a much higher uh, utilization percentage out of your software licensing. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of good reasons, regardless of the size of your company, uh, to look at MSC1. So if you wanted to take this further, if you were interested, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us at desktop. Thank you very much.